say, Dr. Please. You want to do the honors? Uh, no, thank you. However, I, uh, I will stand by if the beast requires any medical attention. <laughs> I think Josiah should be the first to brand one. It was his idea by the cattle in the first place. Uh, no, 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 thank you. Uh, you do it, Austin. Well, somebody's got to do it. Bismarck. Uh, two or three weeks at tops. We need to hire some experienced hands, so I was thinking about putting a notice in the statesman. That's a good idea, Newt. Consider it done. And thanks to the sudden departure of Sir Geoffrey Willis back to his native England, the Citizens Cooperative of Curtis Wells has purchased the cattle and intends to sell them for a tidy profit. Don't forget to say the town treasury will be bolstered as well. We don't want this coming off like some sordid scheme. I got the drive all plotted out. You are taking the cattle to market? Yeah, I'm the trail boss. When did this happen? A while back, I suppose. <laughs> Who else are they gonna hire? It's nice of you to let me know. New. When were you planning on telling me about disappearing on this cattle drive? I thought. I guess it just slipped my mind. You'll be gone for weeks. It just slipped your mind. Hannah. Before the railroad came through and ended the cattle drive, I had one last chance to practice the old ways that Gus and the captain had taught me. One last cattle drive. Sorry. Are you all right? Just dandy, really. Mr. Peel. Josiah Peel. Mr. Peel, could you possibly direct me to the hotel? After all these days on the road, I'm simply dying to perform my proper ablutions. Of course. Uh, let me help you with your baggage. A true gentleman of the West. What a delightful surprise. Right this way.
am I supposed to do? You point the cows east and give them a train ticket? It's not just the drive, Newt. It's everything. All I feel like we say to each other anymore is hello and goodbye. Well, I can't hardly help that now, can I? It's not like there's a lot of scouting or tracking to do outside of the cabin now, is there? You are not listening to me. Have you ever counted the days and nights that I've spent waiting for you? Worrying that you could be hurt or shot or worse? What do you expect me to do, Hannah? Spend the rest of my life working for wages at delivery? But you don't have to. We both know that. I could have used my mother's money to finish off this house a month ago. But no, you have got to personally drive in every blessed nail. It's not about finishing the house, Hannah. It's about building something. And what about building a life together, Newt? Raising a family. Mm. Francis Clay Mosby, you scoundrel. The first flower of New Orleans blooms all the way out here in Montana. I never thought I'd see the day. <laughs> <laughs> Neither did I. However, did you light up on this dreary little outpost? Fate, my dear. Can I interest you in a uh, libation? Now that you mention it, I am somewhat parched from the road. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me for missing your stage, but... I have business matters to attend to in Sweetwater. Our business, I hope. I've had all the help we are going to need. We're ready to go just as soon as the shipment arrives. We move out six Tuesday morning. Bring your own bedroll, horse, gun if you got one. Pays double legal at the railhead. <laughs> Next up. Uh, sorry, ma'am, we're just looking for trail hands. Your man needs to get fed, don't they? Well, yes, ma'am, but we figured we'd do our own cooking. I got my own rig, my own stove, and my own mules. You provide the grub, and I'll see it's ready to eat before you ride out in the morning and before you tuck in at night. Sounds good to me. Austin. Mm -hmm. Piping hot flapjacks and applesauce every morning, sweet potato pie, pork roast done on the spits, corn taters, all the fixings. Like I said, we leave 6 o'clock Tuesday <laughs> morning. Come by tomorrow, I'll fix you up with all the supplies you need. Much obliged, honey. Uh, what's your name? Ma Lester. I do, Nick. Take her out. Blow <laughs> <laughs> <Long> beef. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Tech used to work at the Dunnigan outfit. <laughs> How them boys doing? Oh, well, I can't really say. I've been, uh, I've been off on my own near on a year now. Yeah. Well, you can catch me up on the drive, man. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. <laughs> Thanks, Nate. Hey. Take her off. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good guy. OK, man. Move him out. Austin, you did real good today. <laughs> well, Rock, did you find that tin horn under any here? Austin? He's my brother-in-law. Little Newt up and got himself married. 
Oh, that don't beat off. Oh, come on, Tech. <laughs> so why'd you leave the Dunnigan outfit anyways? Well, Lord's truth is I've been locked up. Yeah? What for? Oh, I, uh... Got in the bad end of a knife fight over Fort Benton Way. I mean, how's I know it's the sheriff's son? <laughs> and he hardly got a scratch, and I'm the one that got stuck behind bars. <laughs> I guess I should have told you. You ain't gonna hold jail against me, are you, Newt? You're a free man now, Tech. That's all that counts. pulled our money and bought the entire herd from Sir Jeffrey. Everyone's guaranteed a profit, and whatever's left over goes into the town treasury. That is absolutely brilliant, Mr. Peel. Thank you. Oh, yes, thank you. Please, call me Josiah. If I may be so bold, Josiah. Oh. <laughs> uh, Hannah. 
allow me to present my daughter, Miss, uh, I mean, Miss Jessup, allow me to present my daughter, Hannah. It's very nice to meet you, Miss Jessup. My pleasure indeed. Such a pretty young girl. The picture of her mother, I take it. Y her late mother, yes. How tragic. Yes. Uh, Miss Jessup just arrived in town the other day, and I thought it'd be nice to show her a little hospitality. Of course. And Father is very hospitable. What happened to me? Excuse me. We brought him back as fast as we could. It don't look good. Clear out of the way. Clear out of the way. Go. Somebody get a doctor. What, what happened? No. Justin, that's what. Get the doctor Nuke? in here. Nuke, can you hear me? <sighs> One of our hands was in cahoots with them. There's nothing we could do. They're all over us. Just hold on. Hear me. Just hold on. You did all you could just getting him here. All we can do now is pray. How's he doing? Dr. Cleese is still with him. Are uh, the others back yet? Yeah, two more men hurt pretty bad. I've called a town meeting for later on, if you're up to it. Town meetings aren't exactly on my mind now, Jeb. Well, how is it? The bullet bounced off a rib and lodged in his spleen. If I had proper surgery equipment, I could have done more for him. He's lost a lot of blood. I'm glad he'll pull through. Go easy on him now. He's gonna need all the rest he can get. Dear Lord, I ask for your blessing. I ask for. I'm so sorry. Copper penny tied up in those cows. We did too. Now, simmer down, everyone. Just calm down. The search party's bound to pick up their trail. We'll find them. By the time we do, it'll be too late. Maybe too late already. This whole thing was your idea, Josiah. What's that got to do? Now your don't choice? go throwing stones now. What's done is done. We have to look to the future so something we like this don't happen again. Curtis Wells. That's we right. wouldn't need to drive, Cat. Yeah. Run that train into Curtis Wells. You can say goodbye to this quiet, decent town right now. The railroad is going to bring commerce and settlers into our community. And That's exactly that, what we carpet need. Carpetbaggers and opportunists looking to make an easy dollar. Our women and children won't be safe on the streets. Oh, balderdash. Josiah, the West is opening up whether you like it or not. Well, let it open somewhere else. With all due respect, Mr. Peel, we cannot sit idly by and watch the rest of Montana grow and prosper all around us. Now, Mr. Simmons is correct. The coming of the railroad is inevitable. Who says it has to be? Not every town between Bismarck and the Rocky Mountains has to be a whistle stop. Well, I believe we can have progress without becoming Sodom and Gomorrah. We all want progress, Mr. Mosby. But I don't want to see Curtis Wells become another uncivilized boom town. Well, rather a boom town than a ghost town. I say we take a formal proposal over to the folks at Northern Pacific and Bismarck. Right. Let's do that. That's a real good idea. Miss Peel? How's your husband getting along? Remarkably well, according to the doctor. Thank you. This must be a difficult time for you. It's a great deal more difficult for Newt. I don't know which is harder on him, being shot or me forcing him to stay in bed. <laughs> oh, according to your father, he's a remarkable young man. My father said that? He surely did. I'd wager he'll be fit as a fiddle and back home with you in no time. I do wish. That is to say that we're still building our cabin just south of town. And having a wounded husband doesn't expedite matters, does it? Newt has insisted on doing it all himself. 
Of course, with him being laid up like this, we'll never get it finished before the weather turns. You'll be all right. You don't strike me as the sort of woman who's likely to linger about, waiting for the winter winds to howl at your door. I'll pop in with you and see if Mrs. Hackett has some candies. You should know better than to play cards with me, Clay. I've always been able to read you like a book. <laughs> Is that so? As I recall, back in Virginia, all the ladies had their eye on you. But your heart was already spoken for. There was a light in your eyes when you were with Mary. I had thought that spark had died along with her. So did I. I take it you met Mrs. Newt Cole. She's so much like your Mary, the hair on my neck stood up. Is she the reason you've settled here? The day I laid Mary to rest, I thought my life was done with. And now I have found her again. And I'm not gonna lose her twice. She may be another's wife, but I am a patient man. You have to let her go. That's the beauty of it. I don't have to. Olivia, you should know better. I never bluff. You are a very lucky man, Newt. If that bullet had gone another inch in any direction, you'd be at the right hand of the Lord by now. What do you say, Doc? Figure I can get back on my feet again? A doc is somewhere you tie up a boat. I am a physician. <laughs> I suppose I'd have to chain you down to make you stay here, wouldn't I? Do you mean that? Only if you promise to stay quiet. You can't afford to start bleeding again. Right. <laughs> Do you feel up to a buggy ride? Well, after a week in bed, a buggy ride sounds great. This is Plum Loco, you know that? Well, how else am I supposed to keep my surprise a secret? <laughs> well, it better be worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> whoa, whoa. Whoa. Uh, are we here? Is this it? This is it. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Let me help you. There we go. There we go. some men from town to do the work. You got better so fast, they didn't have the chance to finish it. The windows are all in. And the roof's done. Except for a few minor details inside, we're just about ready to move in, Newt. What do you think? I think you didn't hear a word I said. Newt. Sweetheart. I wanted to finish the house for when you got well. I wanted to surprise you. Well, this has got nothing to do with me. You just waited. I was laid flat on my back. Go on and do things on your own way. I did this for us. Darling, 
please come inside and take a look? No. I'm not stepping foot in there. This is your house. Not mine. You gotta help me, Cole! There's been no sign of him from here all the way to Cedar Falls. <laughs> I'm afraid you gentlemen are dreaming. My guess is your cattle are being served up right about now at Delmonico's. You don't seem to care much about the people in this town, do you, Mr. Mosby? I happen to care a great deal. On the other hand, I prefer to invest in things that don't just walk away or get stolen by packs of murder and thieves. Guess you won't be riding with us, then. New to you out of your head. You can't ride in the shape you're in. I can take care of myself, Austin. I've been thinking on this. They'll know that the stockyards and railheads in the territory have been Notified to watch for our brand by now. Well, where does that get us? I think like a rustler, Austin. I mean, they're not gonna trundle around for along with stolen cattle. I mean, it's too risky. Got one direction to go, and that's north. What, to Canada? See, they can sell them up there to settlers. And uh, nobody's gonna go checking up on them. We're gonna get after him, first light. Mr. Call, are you certain you're up to leading a posse? It's bound to be a long, hard ride. <laughs> I'm so sick of people telling me what to do. Going, I'll be with you directly. So, you weren't even going to say goodbye this time. Hannah, this is something I got to do. Don't try to talk me out of it. <laughs> Why would I? A girl could get hurt trying to stand in your way. There's something I haven't told you. I had this idea. See, I... I figure if I put money into the herd, too, I can make enough to buy some breeding stock and start raising horses. How much did you put in? All of it? Huh. Newt, you put in all of it without discussing this with me first? I was gonna, but you... It's none of my business, right? I thought we were supposed to make decisions like this together, Newt. Decisions? Like the cap? I did that for us. And that's why I bought stock in the herd get a stake, get our ranch started. Guess that makes us even, huh? Not unless I can get that herd back. You just get yourself back. In one piece this time, you hear me?
can't do this, Josiah. If you hear a freedom of the press, Jeb, this ain't freedom of the press, it's slander. Now, what's to stop the folks at Northern Pacific from thinking you're speaking for all the Curtis Wells? Not telling anybody how to think. I'm just expressing my opinion. It's called editorial privilege. Well, other people have opinions, too. What about the rest of us? It's a free country, Jeb. Get your own newspaper. If you want to fight on this, Josiah, you damn well got it. No way to treat a lady, boys. What the hell are you doing here? I come looking for you. I got to drinking with a bunch over in Little Butte, and they told me them rustlers are headed for the Whoop Up Trail. They are headed for Canada. Thanks, Ma. You're welcome, son. Now let's go get them varmints. Well, he's no more on his feet. Then he's back on the trail again. I don't know. Hannah, just tell me one thing. Do you think of Newt as a friend? <coughs> well, of course I do. I love him. Now, that's not what I asked. You see, sometimes loving someone is easier. Now, liking somebody, that takes time. How long have you two been married? Almost six months. Oh, my goodness, Hannah. You've got a lifetime of scrapping and squabbling ahead of you. Give it time. Ma, 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 what a picture. So there you are, you rascal. Mwah. You ladies mind if I join you? You two know each other? Clay and I? Why, we go back for ages, don't we, my sweet? <laughs> I really must be going. Thank you for the tea. Mr. Mosby, Miss Jessup. There it is, Clay. What? There's what? That light in your eye. Pish. Keep moving! I want to get to the port before nightfall. Oh, hell, Russ. We got 20 miles of hard country between us and Canada. Just do it! Sick of these stinking cows. Come on!
That's it, Ma. Easy, son. Fry pan. What you waiting for? Finish me off. How could you do it, Tech? How could you just cut me down like a dog? I tried just to wing you, Newt. You'd be a dead man if I wasn't so fond of you. It weren't nothing personal. Right, Tech. It's nothing personal. Miss Jessica. Why, good day, Mr. Bean. Receiving mail. One would almost think you're settling in. That may just be the case, Mr. Peel. You and I are going to shake up this little town, my dear. That we are. I think I'm starting to like it here in Curtis Wells. took him on to Bismarck. Tech here's got something he wants to tell you.
I do, Mr. Savings. What the hell are you doing here? I mean, the boys have gotten some trouble in it. We can talk your own back. Like I was saying, me and the boys got in some trouble after we rustled that herd for you. What? What do you mean, trouble? He got caught at it, that's what. Much obliged, Tech. Why'd you do it, Jeb? Was it for the money, or were you just trying to scare people into wanting your precious train station? Uh, I, I told him not to hurt anybody. I swear. Like hell. He told us to do whatever we had to do to get the job done. Well, you are a sight. Got the herd back. It's not the stupid cows I'm worried about. I had time to do some thinking. Me too. Welcome home. At the beginning of a journey, just one step to the left or right will lead a man down a whole different trail. Love in life ain't always so cut and dry. And I thank God I stepped back close to Hannah at the right moment. Too fast for you? No. Nope. Just give him my horse a rest. We can stop anytime you want to. Absolutely not. You wanted to come. I warned you it wasn't going to be no picnic. Am I complaining? This is exactly how I hoped it would be. Let's go. Coming? I'm coming. Well, now, it ain't Mr. Cole. I was expecting you yesterday. Ah, uh, well, Mr. Patch, we got held up by the storm. Hmm. Brought us back a couple days. This is my wife, Hannah. Pleasure, man. I'm anxious to see this horse you're so excited about. Oh, your horse. Uh, well, now, uh, we may have a problem. Uh, see, uh, I sold him. You sold him? Um, Mr. Patch, we had a deal. Uh, I know, I know, but you said you was gonna be here yesterday and I got a better offer. Cash on the barrel head. Now, if you'll kindly give me back my deposit, we'll be on our way. Now, hold on. Just to prove old Ben Patch is a reasonable man, I'm prepared to sell you a better horse. A better horse? Yep. At no additional charge. Beautiful stallion. Beautiful, ain't he? 
a little brazen. Put it this way, ma'am. If the devil rode a horse, this would be his mount. We'll take him. Gambling came as natural to the West as smoke and fire. To be a settler was to be a gambler. Life itself was a game of chance, and in the end, we all played for the same stakes. A dream. You really only just arrived. I'm afraid business calls. However, I have enjoyed my time at your quaint little establishment. Oh, I am so happy. You do realize, of course, that the stage doesn't come until Friday. Oh, I'm not leaving. In fact, I'm looking forward to settling down here in Curtis Wells. Really? Such a charming little spot. Yes, I think so. I realize what an adjustment it is moving to a small town. Let's just say I, I recognize its potential. Oh. Boys? Uh, boys, please. Sorry. No harm done. Thank you again. It's been a pleasure. Miss Olivia, you're not... Uh... No, Mr. Peel, I'm not leaving. My goodness. I'm not even going anywhere, and people are missing me already. And we're still having supper this evening. And of course. Good day. Why, well, Mr. Peel, I do believe you are smitten. Uh, Miss Jessup's new in town. Just being helpful, that's all. My word. I go away for a few weeks, I come back, I find all kinds of surprises. This stallion's gonna sire a strong herd. He seems so calm. Never know he was such a firebrand. <laughs> he knows when to lay low. He's spirited. You can see it in his eyes. I'm Newt Call. This is Hannah, my wife. John Lawson, ma'am. Looks like you got some serious trouble. Uh, ain't nothing I can't handle. You folks best get in your way. John. These folks offering their assistance? You shooing them off? You taking leave of your senses? What you doing, mate? Didn't I tell you to stay off that foot? I'm sick of you telling me what to do. Oh, oh what happened to you? Cut my leg on that damn axle. And it's infected up. Please. My <laughs> lord, how long have you been like this? Three days. I don't fancy dying here. We won't let that happen to you, ma'am. 
Let me help you get your wagon rolling, then we can take you on into Curtis Wells. I don't know. Usually we stay out of town. She needs a doctor now. Maybe we best make an exception. I got a good feeling about these folks. Now, I know you've all been concerned about the fate of your beloved Pig's Eye Saloon. Well, worry and go thirsty no longer. Gentlemen and charming ladies, I give you the best appointed gambling house in the territory, the Ambrosia Club. And may I introduce my new partner, Nolan's finest and loveliest hostess, Miss Olivia Jessup. Place your bets, gentlemen. The first round's on the house. Well, the lady shows her true colors. I'd appreciate it if you'd consult me before offering free spirits. Well, these cowboys are rather rough-hewn. Clay, please. There's nothing more cautious than a sober gambler. You just leave this side of things to me. Precisely what I intend to do, my dear. Miss Jessup, can you explain this? Well, that all depends. What is it you don't understand, Mr. Peel? Roulette or faro? You know very well what I mean. You can't open a gambling parlor. It would appear we just have. Excuse me. It's not just the gambling I object to, it's the element it attracts. I do not intend to stand idly by while you and Mr. Mosby turn this town into another damn sweet water. I'm sorry you've chosen to take this so personally. After all, it's just business. It's not that simple. Maybe we could have something a bit livelier. Well, here we are. Ooh. A hotel. Hey, you don't understand, Newt. Sometimes I can be kind of a problem. You mean on account of you, May? I wouldn't let that worry you too much. You'll be all right. I'll go and see about a room. Good evening. May I help you? Good evening, Ida. These are the losses. They'll be needing a room. My God, what happened to you? It's nothing, ma'am. Newt, would you take these people up to room seven, please? I'll go get Dr. Cleese. Room seven. Ten dollars to fix a wagon. That's almost all we got. <laughs> yeah. You want to get to Oregon? You can always walk. I ain't got much choice. Come on, come on. Me and you have a lot of work to do, mister. I've been out training my horse for the big race so that I'd pay my respects. Mr. Mosby, you didn't, uh, by any chance, buy that horse from a man named Ben Patch, did you? Isn't he a fine-looking specimen? Sure is. That's why I put $10 down to hold him. Do you mean this is the horse we were going to buy? Yeah. <laughs> my apologies. I just assumed the old buzzard was trying to drive a hard bargain. 
I noticed you didn't come away empty-handed, though. No. The harvest race. You entered? Reckon I'd be a fool not to. The hell bitch is the fastest horse in the territory. I hope you won't mind when he crosses the finish line first. No, not if I'm there waiting for him. Takes more than a fast horse to win a race, Mr. Mosby. This is wonderful. It is? Absolutely. What we have here is a serious infection. A golden opportunity. The very latest development from Dr. Lister's laboratory in London. Carbolic antiseptic. Could you help me lift the leg, please? Dr. Please is a man ahead of his time. <laughs> well, an innovator, to be exact. See, medicine isn't just a science, it's an art. Is it gonna get better? Oh, it shall, my good woman. fortuitous that you found me when you did, Mrs. Grayson. Just make sure she stays off this leg. I'll check in on you tomorrow. Thank you, doctor. Good day. Thank you very much, doctor. Thank you, Mrs. Grayson. I hope you don't get in trouble with the owners of this hotel on account of me and John. Oh, I doubt it. <laughs> this is my hotel. You own this? Yes. I own it with Newt, at least on paper. When I decided to buy it, um, Newt helped me bend a few rules. Newt and Hannah are fine folks. Yes, they certainly are. May, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? How did you and John get together? I was walking home from church. Some boys were giving me a lot of trouble. And John came, and he gave them the what for. He offered me his arm. He walked me all the way home, made sure I was safe. We've been together ever since. How did your family take to him? How do you think? I've got a sister in Oregon City. We're gonna go live there. Our marriage is legal there. Oh, silly laws are only part of the problem. It's people that are always so disappointing, May. Nothing we've been through has forced us apart yet. God has a plan for you too. You reckon? Maybe you're chosen to help people to understand that love has no color. is everything. I hope so. Hey, hey. What's going on in there? Hey. You gotta get the hell bitch out of here. I can't control them stallions much longer. She ain't supposed to go in the season. Not for a while yet. Well, I don't care when she's due. Just get her out of here. Don't you think it's a little strong, Father? I don't like the Ambrosia Club any more than you do. I think you're taking this a little too personally. He's suggesting I'm letting my feelings interfere with the editorial policy of the paper? Well, yes. Well, how am I supposed to feel? She presented herself as something else, a lady, not a... She deceived me. She deceived all of us. Seems to me Mr. Mosby has as much to do with that as anyone. And as far as Miss Jessup's concerned, well, we all saw what we wanted to see. She is charming. Yes. And you haven't had that look in your eyes since before Mother died. Wow. Keep back, children. This isn't a toy. Huh. 
I don't suppose there's any way I can get my money back, is there? I don't understand, Newt. You're sure to win. She's not hurt, is she? Well, no, she's fine. It's just... Well, she's in season. I'm sure Mr. Mosby will be disappointed the way he's been talking up this race. <laughs> Between you and me, I was looking forward to your kicking his cracker behind. <laughs> <laughs> me too. But I'm afraid I can't refund the entry fee. Rules. Cooking, that's Mrs. Coleman's job. You don't have to do that. Oh, I don't mind. I know just how May likes her eggs. Do you have any luck? Did you find work? Oh, well, I tried every place in town. Mm -hmm. oh, well, don't worry. We'll pay your bill. I'm not worried about that. You'll send the money from Oregon. May and I had a very long talk. And I know that the two of you have had a great deal of trouble. Well, it's been hard on May. You know, having to pretend we ain't together. Afraid to walk beside me for fear of causing trouble. Sometimes, I just want to reach out and take a hand like everybody else. Tell them all to go to the devil. John, why don't you go see about your wagon and let me take this up to May? It really looks delicious. <laughs> perfect. Just perfect. Thank you, Miss Grayson. You're welcome. Edith, how's the wagon coming along? Well, I'm glad you came by. I'm afraid I got bad news. Now, I can fix the back axle up all right, but the reach there is broke clean through, and uh, it'll never make it over the mountains. You sure? There's nothing else you can do? No. How much is all this going to cost? Well, about $40. Yeah. Good. Sorry. It's the best I can do for you, mister. Am I saying so? You look like you could use a drink. Actually, uh, I could use a job. Wish I could help. I'm sorry. I'll do anything. Why don't you try your luck? I ain't had much of that lately. That can all change with a spin of the wheel. That's worth a hundred dollars at least. Miss Jessup? Are you sure about this? Yes, ma'am. Good luck. 
John? I've been looking all over for you. May's worried to death. I'm all right. Just leave me alone. All bets down. What are you doing, John? I'm trying to get to Oregon. What does it look like I'm doing? It? Got into you. I don't know, me. I went in there looking for work. I was winning. You never should have gone in there in the first place. I should have quit while I was ahead. You lost all our money, didn't you? Wagon. The horses. Everything. Damn you. It's not bad enough that the whole world's against us? Way, I'm sorry. What if you'd gone back to prison? Or well, maybe you'd be better off. Maybe. John, if you, uh, Need a place to stay, there's room out at our cabin. So you think you can make a racehorse out of him? No. We're still talking about it. Any luck with May? She wouldn't even let me in the room. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry. She'll come around. Just give us some time. You don't understand. I've been in trouble before. You know, me and May, we set out for Oregon more than three years ago now. A few weeks out of Minneapolis, we pull into this town in Dakota. And this fella says a few things about May. My blood just starts to boil before I know it. Split his head clean open. Cost me two years in prison. Well, if she waited for you then, she ain't gonna give up on you now. I hope you'll excuse the intrusion. May I come in? Josiah, you've been avoiding me. We just don't have as much in common as I thought we did. I know you don't approve of my involvement in the Ambrosia, but frankly, I don't think it should make a difference. You did not tell me you were in business with Mr. Mosby. 
Oh, for heaven's sake, Josiah. Am I required to submit every detail of my affairs to you for approval in order to enjoy your company? Let me assure you those details are no longer of interest to me. I'm sorry it had to come to this. If you ever decide to come down from your high horse, you'll know where to find me. Father got word from Austin. He won't return from Denver in time. Oh. I hope that story he's working on is worth missing the race for. Do you think our firebrand can win? Yeah. I just don't know if it wants me along for the ride. Yeah, easy, Firebrand. Mr. Mosby, we need to talk. Miss Grayson, the busiest man could always find time for you. Mr. Lawson is very upset and embarrassed about what happened. Hmm, indeed. When he came in last night looking for a job, we had no idea he intended to redecorate. Well, he would like to make amends. Well, that's thoughtful of him. However, it seems rather unlikely, since I believe he lost the means. I've never met a gambler who didn't take a bet he could not lose. Well, do go on, Mrs. Grace. Well, I can't see that you really need his horses or his broken-down wagon. After he's worked off his debt, he'll return them. Then he and his wife will be on their way to Oregon. Hmm. I'd like to help, truly. But, uh, if we were to do something like that for Mr. Lawson... <laughs> You can only imagine the consequences. On the other hand, perhaps a gesture of goodwill on your part might improve your standing with those in the community who see you in a very unfavorable light. I'm sorry, Miss Grayson, but the Ambrosia Club is not in the business of charity. No decency either, apparently. Good day, Mr. Mosby. mind of his own. Glad to see that's not going to keep you from an opportunity to match our horsemanship. 
Newt's still going to beat you, Mr. Mosby. Well, I think you're going to have to sit saddle first. Assuming he's successful, I'd like to propose a little wager that concerns you both. Uh, I've just about had it with gambling, Mr. Mosby. Let me out first. If you win, I'll write off Mr. Larson's debt and return his wagon and stock. And if I don't? The debt stands. And the stallion is mine. I won't let you do that, you. It's my problem. I can handle it. Newt, you said it yourself. Next to the Hellbitch, this stallion is the fastest horse you've ever seen. And wildest. You're on, Mr. Mosby. Take care of your team. News. I'll do it. Hey. from the catalog. You fixing on entering it in the race? It's the latest in transportation. Never needs food, water, or maintenance. In a few years, these will take over the horse. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Miss Cole. You, you are a vision. The old male must agree with you. Morning, Mr. Mosby. Newt, I want to wish you good luck. Well, may the best horse win. Oh, well, it takes more than a fast horse to win a race, Mr. Cole. <laughs> Day, Mr. Mosby. Oh, May, you are looking so much better today. Do you think so, Miss Ida? Yes, I do. And it's such a beautiful day today. Yes. Let's hope it stays that way. I can't believe you let Mr. Carl stake his horse on our future. I tried talking him out of it. I want the two of you to relax and enjoy the fair. Newt Call knows exactly what he's doing. I sure hope so. Josiah, have a wonderful day. 
Ida. <laughs> what do you think? It's come a long way. Just wish we had more time. You are gonna do great. <laughs> Come on. Come on, touch. This is a sophisticated piece of machinery. Necessary. <laughs> if you believe for one moment that besting a woman's husband in a horse race will win her heart, you're even a bigger fool than I thought. At least you'll finally know who's the better man. And hate you for it. Not at all. I have no intention of keeping that stallion. Now, once Mr. Carl has tasted defeat, I intend to present the horse to Hannah. That's my personal gift. I've given some thought to what you said. I was unkind. I'm sorry. Was there something else, Mr. Peel? Well, I... I was, uh... hoping we could still have that supper. Of course, you realize I intend to do everything in my power to close down the Ambrosia. I wouldn't expect any less of you. Take your marks. Ready?
Turn it off! I was right. That is one fine animal. Almost had you beat. As far as I'm concerned, you did. Mr. Lawson, let's call us even. You can pick up your wagon at the livery. Another race, another time. Says Paul. days, it seemed like every other week a wagon came into town carrying settlers looking for a place to call home. Some liked Curtis Wells and stayed, and others moved on, hoping to find something better a little further along the way. They say that love conquers all. Of course, I don't know anyone in their right mind who would take odds on that. Still, it's a nice thought. Austin, just because you got a few dollars burning a hole in your pocket, don't mean you got to blow it all in sweet water. We worked hard for that money. I just want to kick my heels up some, that's all. I know, but I just want to get home. Don't be such a married man. You are a pick of trouble, Austin. She was special when you dropped by town, Austin. She'll know how to treat a girl like a man. Don't worry about that, sweetheart. There's plenty more where that came from. <laughs> Me and Newt just made some solid money riding shotgun for the miners at Milk River. Mm -hmm. Didn't we? He sure was right. Austin. Newt mm. married my sister. Never got around to buying her a decent engagement ring. He just bought her one up in uh, Dakota. Ooh, that is so romantic. <laughs> you never bought me nice things like that. Mm -hmm. Hey, sure was right. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> oh, let's see this. Ooh. Oh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Oh, that is so beautiful. Oh, she is just gonna love that to peace. You think so? Oh, well, any girl would. <laughs> oh, let me Get your paws off my woman. What the hell are you doing? Can't you see that I'm busy? Hey, now. Hey, now. Come on. You guys want to be together, we'll just be on our way. Uh -uh, not so fast. This ain't no cause for gunplay, mister. Lamb, just put that thing down before somebody gets hurt. I told you what I would do to you if I caught you two timing me again. Done killed him, boy.
As I recall, my brother-in-law often had a knack for being in the wrong place at exactly the right time. On more than one occasion, I had the misfortune to be standing next to him, and whether I liked it or not, I got drawn in. Where is he? Don't know. Well, I can't say I'm of a mind to stay and find out. It was self-defense. No short of the witnesses tell him that. Let's go. Popular fella. Austin. Thanks for taking care of Lemmy. Never was no good anyways. So you leaving town so soon? Oh, uh, me and Newt got to get back to Curtis Wells. Take me with you. Oh, uh, well. Yeah, I know. I'm not the kind of girl a gentleman like you brings home. No, hey, wait. Ruby. It ain't like that at all. Yes, it is. Well. See you next time. Come on. After that, Toussaint was pretty much dead as a doornail. Who's done it? Some young greenhorn he got in a scrap with over a woman. That stupid son of a bitch. Come on up, boys. That's them, I'm sure of it. They killed the saint. And they're just riding away? Don't rightly seem fair, does it? Social call. Seen a couple of them ugly faces before. Whoa. Keep your hand away from your gun. Afternoon, boys. Down off your mounts. Well, if it's all the same to you, we'll just uh, be on our way. I ain't asking. Gun belt. Slow and easy. Then off with them boots. You too. What do you think, boys? Maybe we ought to teach these girls a lesson. Big mistake, pup. Ain't he a sight? <laughs> Two, you hold this jackrabbit still for me. Don't get eager, boy. I won't keep you waiting long. Out. This little son of a bitch is mine. Ain't no other takers. You say hello to Lamb Toussaint for me. 
Here, boy. Mount up. Maybe the marshal was right, uh, Penelope. Maybe I should have let her go. Tarnation if every sporting girl in town started shooting customers on account of their not paying up. Sweetwater would be a ghost town before you know it. What do you think? Sorry, side to behold. Lucky you're still walking this earth. Who are you? Name's Curtis. Just Curtis. Don't recollect whether it's my front name or my back one, but that's all I got. Oof. Easy, son. You ain't out of the woods by a long ways yet. What is that stuff? Old herds, moss, little mud. You've been delirious. Chatty <laughs> little cuss, too. Sounds like the world's kicked you around some. I've had some bad luck of late. Yeah, well, it's gonna get a damn sight worse if we don't cold camp about half a mile up in them trees before dark. What are you talking about? Blackfeet. Old bear claw on his bunch. Them devils ain't above a little night crawling and making a smell out smoke a mile off. Old bear claw's been after my hair so long, 
I swear, I don't know what we do without each other. Let's go here. I don't think, think I can walk. Yeah, well, I'll carry you. <laughs> the pain gets too bad now. We just pass out. We don't want you moaning and groaning out loud, do we? That's it. Hold on. All right. Let me see that. Hey. Hey. You really want it that bad? Didn't think so. Jail from son. Little town called Curtis Wells. You know it? <laughs> Damned if I don't. I was scouting for the army when I found those well springs. Next thing you know, they throw the town up around it. Then they named the damn town after me. <laughs> I hate towns. Can you take me there? Well, I can take you part. What do you hear? It ain't what I hear, it's what I ain't hearing. Here, take this. What ain't you hearing? Birds. They shut up their singing when there's company about. I don't see anything. When you don't see engines, that's usually where you'll find them. Where's your fire? You ain't got but a little lead. What kind of old damn piece is that? 50 caliber Hawkins. Ain't it a beaut? You ever hear of repeating rifles? You know, them things got too many moving parts on them. Ain't many gunsmiths up in these parts, you know. Figure they took off? Maybe. This was just some scouts. Those shots will bring the main party. We're gonna have to move out. Dead after all. Where am I? Home. At least closest to it I ever knew. Some mistake here. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what they all say. Sweet water? Oh, you look like a mess. Here. Clean up. How'd I get here? Uh, through that door there. Sheriff Riddlefine. You're the fellow who shot Lem too, Saint, ain't you? Don't worry, Austin. Oh, they won't hang you for this. What? But I got a real pretty black dress, if they do. That she has. Cries like hell, too. You're the sheriff. Jack Riddle at your service. Mm -hmm. I'm here to see your last days are as comfortable as possible. You gotta let me out of here. My brother-in-law, I gotta find him. Don't worry. Weren't no one else out there. He's probably dead by now anyways. And if he is, you'll soon be joining him. Wait a minute. This is about two, Saint. I didn't even get a chance to draw my gun. Everyone saw what happened. It was an accident. Tell him. Well, he was so brave. You're my hero. Heroes and cowards. Killer's a killer. The next stretch all the same in the end. This is insane. Why are you doing this? Well, I'm just so glad you're all right. Now, I really have to go now, but don't you worry. I'm going to visit every chance I get. Bye. What about a trial? Oh, we had that. You lost it. That's rotten luck. 
The engine's here about. Call that chuck of country out there, spirit walking. Right now there's maybe two, three hundred lodges out there. Pagans, hunkapapas, northern shine, you know. All looking for good medicine for the common hunt. Now the problem is, the wagon road to Curtis Wells lies about 20 miles on the far side of it. Can we go around them? Well, you see, engines don't share our kind of ideas about boundaries. Spirit walking might run 100 miles in either direction. I guess we got to go right over it then. <laughs> no, no, no. Right here is as far as this child goes. Son, I, I live up here. This is my home. Aside from bear claws, ornery bunch, I, I get along with these tribes. But that's sacred ground out there. If they see me on it, they, they'd be running my tail to hell all through these mountains. This here they see before thine eyes is the judgment of all who ride the Amlock Trail. All I say unto thee, who ride with the devil's host, and partake of his evils, as he shall, so... Get out of here. Go on, get out Go on, you get out of here. Go on. Now, folks around here got an odd idea about entertainment. Uh, I'll see the man gets buried this afternoon. Damn fool ain't got no more brains than to let a green kid drop him. You just leave him there to rot. Look, Crow, uh, I'm gonna have to let the kid go. Hold him for a few days. Leastwise, till our trail gets cold. It's a kindness. I see his face, I'll have his liver and lights. I, I got no charge. The shooting was a fair fight. I'm sure you'll think of something, Riddle. I'm much obliged, Curtis, for saving my life and bringing me this far. Just hold on, boy. You ain't going anywhere. You ain't anywhere near strong enough. Well, it's my intention. No damn way. I've seen how you move through this country. Heard a buffalo draw less attention. I don't learn you a thing or two, you wouldn't get one mile. At least I can do is give you a fighting chance. I ain't got the time, Curtis. You know what those Indians will do if they catch you? They'll take three days to carve the meat off your bones and keep you alive the whole way. You take care now. They got ears on them, boy. They can hear a magpie passing wind in a hailstorm. Maybe I will hang around a mite, Curtis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It ain't so bad once you get used to it. Quick! Get out of here. <laughs> Time's up. Thank you, Sheriff. Sheriff, damn it, come back here! What do you want now? I'm no murderer. Now, there must be some way out of this. Well, that, that's a tough call. You see, on one hand, I'm a firm believer in an eye for an eye. And on the other hand, it pains me to leave a man without any hope. You mean there is a chance? <laughs> I've been a sheriff for more years than I can count. It's hard and dangerous work, Austin. You don't mind me calling you Austin, do you? Please, Jack. Situation's a situation. That's the way you gotta look at it, see? Each one is different. Each one is unique in its own way. Take, for example, the, the difference between murder and disorderly conduct. Sometimes it's not as, uh, it's not as much as it seems. Just how much would this difference be, Sheriff? <sighs> Punishment's got to fit the deed. Now, the life of a 
Rotten scum like Toussaint must be worth at least uh, fifty dollars. Let me out. I'll get you the money by the end of the week. You have my word. <laughs> Your word ain't gonna put a jingle in my pocket. It ain't gonna keep my feet warm. And... Listen, damn it, this isn't just about me. Newt's out there someplace. Now, if you're gonna keep me locked up in here, at least you can do is go look for him. Please. You gotta do something. <laughs> I gotta hand it to you, Austin. <laughs> you know, I. Uh, I like your spirit. You'd do just about anything, wouldn't you? Be a lot easier just to pay me the fifty dollars. You never run up a slope straight. You always run angle-wise. You Curtis. also gotta remember what's behind you. Someone may be shooting at you. And if they are, it's a lot harder to hit someone who's running at an angle than if they're running straight. Hey, Curtis, how long is this? It's all gonna take. Well, it took me nigh on to 60 years. We might be able to trim it a little for you. You're in such a damn rush. You ever been married? Well, I pondered on it one time, yeah. What happened? Well, I pondered on it so long, I figured I'd better unponder it, so I did. <laughs> you see, I figure running through these mountains with a bunch of blackfish chasing you ain't a decent life for a woman now, is it? Hmm? You gotta feel the country. Listen to it breathing. And talk so quiet, one man can drown it out. Close your eyes. What do you hear? Nothing. Oh, my lord, boy. If you ain't dead, you're working on it. Now, I hear at least a dozen things. You're gonna sit there till you can name them all. So you stay on the pine needles. You watch out for the leaves on the twigs. <laughs> now you're thinking on it. You gotta do it without thinking on it. Then you're moving a lot faster. Squirrel. Scared by something. No. We'd heard it scramble up a tree. <laughs> Well, you're getting there. Yes, sir. You know, you and me should go in business together. We could run trap lines, clear over to the Saskatchewan River, have ourselves one hell of a time. Um, I kind of got things to do, Curtis. Yeah, that friend of yours. Damn it, boy. You're limiting your horizon to something terrible. Damnation. I'd be a peaceable man. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> I need some money. It's a matter of life and death. I don't have any money, Austin. And I suppose I could get a message to that rich daddy, yours in Curtis Wales. You're in on this, too. Why? You don't have to make a living in this town. Whatever Sheriff Riddle's paying you, I'll pay you more. I promise. I'd like to, Austin, but if Riddle wants to, he can make my life real tough. 
You're all I've got. Ever tell you about Wolf Johnson? Twice. Well, I'm kind of partial to that story. And I passed on to you about all I can think of. Might as well have this too. What is it? Medicine bag. Blackfoot. Powerful magic. You believe in magic? Back when I was with Captain Gus, we had this Mexican cook, Paul Campo. He was big on it. Things he said come true most of the time, too. Yeah, I guess I ain't dismissing magic. When you keep that medicine bag, you think on it. When you cross that Indian country there, you think on all of what I showed you. Your medicine's good. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to thank you for everything you've done for me, Curtis. I've got nothing to give you in return. Ain't you ever gonna sit down? Suit yourself. But you're starting to get on my nerves. Good. You got a pig-headed streak that I don't much appreciate. Some folks don't always take me seriously. They think, cuss the way this town is, I ain't worth nothing. They think they can do whatever the hell they want. But that ain't true. You're a disgrace to the badge. <laughs> is that so? It is, and you know it. New could die just because you're a greedy son of a bitch. Well, that's too bad. Because this greedy son of a bitch is the only thing that's standing between you and the end of a rope. Oh, grab his gun! Come here! Grab his gun! Ow! I could shoot you, and nobody would give a damn. Go ahead. What's going on here, Sheriff? Is Austin giving you trouble? Don't trust him, Sheriff. He's tricky. So, Jack, I'm feeling kind of lonely. Thirsty, too. You wouldn't happen to have a bottle line around, would you? Hmm? You two, uh, you behave yourselves. Thanks a lot. That's hardly enough for both of us. Guess I'll have to quench my thirst someplace else. Hmm? No, no, wait, wait, wait. Come on. Come on!
Give me that! <sighs> What'd you do that for? I'm tired of the damn noise. Twang, twang, twang. You're not even playing a song. It is so a song. I just didn't get a chance to finish it. I mean, you, you think I like listening to your noise? Hell, all you've been doing is complaining. You're right. What do I have to complain about? Exactly. A man tried to kill me. Me and my brother-in-law get beaten, robbed, and left for dead. Oh, and then I'm arrested for murder. Sheriff's trying to hang me, and the only thing standing between me and the news is a sporting girl trying to pick my pockets. Other than that, my life's just a bed of roses. Don't you think? Hey, you know what I do at a time like this? What? you, girl. Nice, ain't she? Sure is. She's for sale. Do me a favor. Don't sell this to anyone until I get back, all right? All right. Sit down, you're making me dizzy. I just wish she'd... Sheriff! Sheriff Riddle! Newt! Newt, is that you? Austin? Oh, Newt, am I glad to see you. Lord. Austin, I thought for sure you was dead. Well, you're almost right. Sheriff Riddle's practically ready to hang me for killing two saints. What happened to you? I'll tell you later. Right now, we gotta get after those men that jumped us. I ain't going home without Hannah's ring. Well, they picked me clean, too. Bastards. I spotted our horses over at delivery. Kavanaugh must have sold them off or something. I'll get after that directly right now. Let's get you out of here. Well, Ruby's already working on Sheriff Riddle. Ruby? No, no, no. Jack, let's go into that cozy little room yours, huh? Last time you said it smelled like something died in there. That's the last time. This time it's going to be different. <laughs> Lovely. Jack. Jack. Time's a waste. Why don't you come over here, huh? Let's get your head here. Grab that whiskey, that's a boy. What's your step? That's a good boy. Come with me. <laughs> I had 
had no idea you had your cap set for the likes of me. <laughs> well, girl, let's have her secret, sir. Kavanaugh's men are camped out, or I'll give you a haircut you'll never forget. You can't be serious! You're damn straight he is. We know you got a rigged game here, Riddle. Unless you want your sorry hide turned over to the federal marshal, you best start talking. Uh, uh, all right, I'll tell you, now get off of me! Now, where's Kavanaugh? And be staked out in the trees at Moses Creek, just downstream from the way station. What the hell are you doing? No, you can't! You can't do this! We'll be back, Sheriff. As soon as we settle up with Cam. How'd you get the horses back? Let's just say the man at liver is sleeping on my offer. Hey, Austin. Stay out of jail, will you? You just ain't the type. I'll do my best. Sorry about all that hanging talk, Austin. Have meant no harm by it. Thank you, Ruby. Austin. I gotta go. Austin, come on. See Kevin. Well, let's take care of these three. You boys are gonna cry to your mama when you see the hand I got. Put your gun away. Kill a man looking him dead in the eye. Hope Kavanaugh enjoys his stay behind bars. The next time you want to stop in Sweetwater, remind me to hogtie you and drag you home. It wasn't my fault. You're right. It was my fault for letting you talk me into it in the first place. Hey. We came out of it all right, didn't we? You got a way of finding trouble, Austin. One day, you may not find your way out. You worry too much. 
You know, this is going to be a great story. I might even write it up for the states. <laughs> They'd never believe it. You're probably right. <laughs> Dakota Territory was full of towns like Sweetwater. Most of them dried up and blew away, and some got bigger. And as the years went on, they became respectable. I can picture just how it was when we thought the West could never be tamed. And the curious thing is, that's just how I want to remember it.